I could hear the noise coming from the other side of the frosted glass at the far end of the changing room. It had to have been the sound of the water boiler for the bath. Steam was enshrouding the glass door and the heat from it leaking into the changing room where I was standing too. My misgivings deepened. People didn't normally take a bath this early in the morning. Well, how early in the morning is it anyway? <laughs> if one did, then it would mean that in this house time had been stopped ever since some moment last night. It's like, it's impossible. People never take baths in the morning. They take showers, this is absurd! Whistle, 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 was it being reheated? The water boiler in the bathroom had been active this whole time. I checked in a clothing basket and saw Sudoku's familiar uniform stuffed in it. The uniform had stains and dried rice stuck to it, certainly not something she could wear today. But it was probably from the miso soup at the dinner table yesterday. I looked hard at the frosted glass, but I couldn't see anything through all the steam. And then, an electric surge ran through my mind. A terrible premonition came over me. Could she? She couldn't possibly have been in there since last night. That would be impossible! Oh, God. But no. In any bizarre right now, nothing was impossible. I gulped audibly, then quietly pulled aside the last door. Hot, steaming air burst out of the slight opening. The fan wasn't on in the changing room, so it went completely white with the steam. Just as the hot vapor poured into the changing room, cooler air also flowed into the room with the bath. And I just heard, due to being hit by that air, a very weak moan. That was all I needed to know who it was. Sotoko! Sotoko was in the bathtub, surrounded by a thick layer of rising steam. The top half of her body was leaning over the edge of the tub, and she was passed out. The water boiler kept on making a whistling noise as if angered. I could see the gas flame through a small window. It was roaring at full force, completely blue. Stoker's entire body was boiled red and flaccid as though her bones had melted away. She was almost like a doll as she lay there unconscious. I wasn't sure how many seconds passed as I stared in complete bafflement. I came back to my senses and promptly shut off the boiler. And then I dragged Stoker's small body out of the bathtub. The water in it was as hot as the water in public baths. She in this boiling water for the entire night. She'll die, she'll die! Zoka's body was lighter than I expected as I laid her on the floor and wrapped her in a towel. I went back into the bathroom and opened up the vent, creating a path for a cool breeze to come through. Upon the breeze hitting her, Sudoku moaned again. It'll be alright, Sudoku! It's me, Keichi! Keichi! Can you hear me? recognized me and muttered a response, but I couldn't really tell what she was saying. Her eyes were muddy and unfocused. I could tell she wasn't completely conscious. Upon closer inspection, her limbs and waist were twitching slightly. This was way worse than normal overheating. This was dangerous. Didn't they call this heat stroke? Think, what would a teacher do if a girl passed out in the middle of summer in a marathon in gym class or something? I turned the water faucet in the kitchen all the way on and soaked the towel in it. I then took the cold towel and pressed it to Stoker's forehead. Stoker reacted harshly to the coldness and let out a muffled voice. Burns, right. You were soaked there, a burn spot under running water. Then could I run cold water in the shower and cool off like that? No. If, that was, if it was that sudden, it wouldn't be good for her heart. But she'd go into shock. I think I read that once before. Ah, and this was about as much nursing as I could possibly give her. Anything more than this would be too much for the likes of an amateur. What happened, Sudoku? You're all right now. I will. Your navy will save you for sure. What? No, wrong.
pussy look of sailing under her breath. Ah, oh, yeah, I remember. I brought my ear to her mouth to make out the mysterious spell like words she kept saying. At that moment, I understood what they were for. Soko, you're counting! Why? People tell little kids in the bath to count to a hundred along, right? Soko is counting like that. But 5,039? You moron! How long were you supposed to count in your own bathtub? Ten. I doubted my ears and doubted her common sense. Ten thousand? You're a freaking idiot! What kind of dumbass can count to ten thousand? There's no way you could do that! You'd boil it up before you get that far! Why were you? Uncle. Last night her uncle flew into a rage at the dinner she'd made, saying it stunk and was inedible. Stoker didn't understand what on earth he meant. It wasn't much different than what she usually made for him. Maybe he hated the smell of the pickled vegetables she ate, or in particular. Her uncle then decided the stink was originated from Stoko, and shouted at her that she never ever take duck baths. And then he put Stoko in the boiling water and told her not to come out until she counted to. <laughs> Snap! Then exploded! Raising the newspaper wrapped hatchet, I stampeded through the house. I searched for anything traces, signs, smells, vibrations, heartbeats. With a war cry, I raced up the stairs with such force I could have stomped a hole through them. Then I found the futon in the room I thought to be her uncle's, and well away he wasn't sleeping in it. I bashed it with the hatchet. Then you run into the closet. I'll bust the entire closet down, door and all! And if he's not there, maybe there's a secret door. And switches our levers in the walls here. I smashed into wall after wall with a hatchet, crushing them. Dust arose into the air and broken pieces scattered about the other floor. I smashed all the glass windows too, for good measure. <laughs> Hamming it up there. I mean, it's a serious scene, but... You gotta relieve some of the tension, goddammit. After I destroyed everything beyond recognition in her uncle's room, my reason finally kicked in and suppressed my emotions. I mean, imagine if I used that and it's, it's, it's like professional voice acting, it's like, Why did you ham that scene up? It was supposed to be a very serious scene. It's like, trying to relieve the tension. But we go for maximum tension though, you idiots! Anyway, her uncle wasn't in the house right now. I'd have to leave killing him until later. Right now, I had to do something about Satoko. I went back to the changing room. Satoko was still lying limp on the floor. There was nothing more an amateur like me could do for her. I needed to take her to the clinic. The coach treated me like a lunatic yesterday and tried to lock me up in a mental hospital. I never wanted to see his damn face again, but I still needed to go to the infirmary one more time. I needed to have a doctor look at Satoko. What about putting her in the dirty uniform lying in the laundry baskets? But I have no experience dressing someone. This would be pretty difficult. Shit, I don't have time to be wasting here! I eventually gave up on clothing her and decided to carry her in her uh, bath towel. The clinic was close to Sudoku's house. It would be way faster to carry her there than to call 119 again ambulance. So that's the one they have in uh, Japan then, 119. Like here in the UK it's 999 and I think in the US it's 911. What's with the inconsistencies, man? I was like, why nine nine, like three nines for freaking the UK one? It's just like, like those old phones we have to like, like, like back then you'd think they would have like come up with something a bit more easy. I mean, it makes no difference nowadays, but imagine back then, it's like nine, god damn it, nine, god damn it, nine, <laughs> just I feel comedian Lee Evans did a joke about that. He's like, nine, nine. There was a guest like, hello. Now he's dead because it takes so long to freaking call. 
I fit the biggest towel I could find over and prompted her to stand. Okay, serious now. Can you stand? I'll carry you over to the clinic. Thank you. Her words sounded clearer than before. She was starting to come back. I cried tears of relief just now and she'd improved even a little bit. So I turned over so she was lying on her face and then put up a weak struggle to get up on a knee. I smoothly swept her up and put her on my back. The towel I put on her seemed like it was about to fall off. The towel it hurts. We'll be there soon. It won't be long. So stay strong. It didn't hurt one bit to carry Sudoku. She was light. Too light. The lightness actually made me uneasy. Outside it had gotten hotter as they were eager to attack Sudoku. Fucking Kakatas! Why did I have to choose this morning to get so hot out? I didn't have time to swear at them. The clinic was this way. When you sting Sudoku on my back, I broke into a trot. They cry when they cry. Sorry, I got in bloody dark. It's only five. I mean, that's kind of like how it is this time of year, really, isn't it? By five, it gets kind of dark. Turn the light on. The hilly road to the clinic, with which I had never had difficulties before, was now torturous. Big beads of sweat formed on my brow, and at some point my breath had grown faint. The hatchet in my belt was heavy and made it hard to walk. I considered leaving it, but I couldn't let it go, at least not while Sudoku's uncle was still breathing. A signboard for the area clinic came into sight. I quickly noticed something was odd, so I stopped. Several red revolving lights were flashing at the clinic. Three police cars were parked in the parking lot with their lights on. There didn't seem to be much else to inform me something had happened. I didn't want to see Coach, so I had planned to leave Sudoku in the clinic waiting room and give the receptionist a message. But with a police officer I wish you here, I couldn't go inside so carelessly. What's going on? Why are there so many police cars? Gently puts Sudoku down in the shade of the thicket. I don't know. We'll go see what happens, so you stay here for a moment. A lady in a place like this where I end up with a bath owl simply unforgivable. You can still fire off those insults to be fine. I'll be right back, I added, getting to my feet. Portions of my surroundings, I hit myself behind a car and got close to the officers, groped at the clinic's entrance. I overheard an officer wearing a necktie, probably their leader and a white robed doctor having a discussion about something. The doctor didn't seem to be coach. It was one of those who coach told me to make tea yesterday. So, you were the first one to find it since you were on morning duty. So then, what did it look like? You were sitting on a sofa in the head office. It looked like he was taking a nap. It was a jug and an empty bottle uh, of sleep medication on his desk, so you immediately thought he had tried to commit suicide with it. What else? Yeah, his high temperature and ink utterance indicated a severe disturbance of consciousness. Seemed like a typical case of sleeping pill poisoning, so I immediately began to treat him. I called the police or an ambulance. So the hospital, and I am a doctor. Since his life was in danger, it's my job to treat him at once. Yes, yes, I understand. Okay, what else? His breathing was in disarray, so I put him on a respirator. Almost administrated breathing stimulants. It had no effect, so I prepared a medical ventilator, and... I'm um, right, right. So in other words, you did what you could, but it wasn't enough. That's it, right. You reported this as soon as he died. Yes. It was very unfortunate that we were unable to save him. Just then, a radio and one of the police cars started to buzz, producing a broken mechanical voice. Say it's Q, say it's Q. Komiyama san, can you hear me? Over. Hello, this is Komiyama. We've got the same voice. We've come up with something. Looks like he committed suicide with sleeping pills. No notes or anything. Suicide? What? What the heck were they talking about? Someone had committed suicide at the clinic. Who? I wish Tokna son died and she died the next day. And yesterday I wish Coach was dead. Then, could he have? Did he use sleeping medication regularly? I don't really know. 
Did he normally complain that he was tired or wanted to die? Well, Iria Senso was normally so, well, himself. He never acted like that. So, well, I was right. Iria Sensei, we were talking about Coach. Coach killed himself. Why would he do that? There couldn't have been any reason he wanted to die. The only reason that came to mind was that I wanted him dead. This world was insane. If I wanted someone dead, they'd die. That was the kind of world this was. Then, what about Oishi? What happened to him? If people really died because I wanted them to, then something should have happened to him too. I've sent you back up. The chief wants you to leave the rest of them and get back to searching for Oishi's car. Yes, sir. Please excuse me, then. It looks like we're again relieved here, so please leave everything as it is right now. Alright, let's go. The officer's nodded and split into the patrol cars. Do you say, searching for Oishi's car? Yeah, it was over a month ago, but I just now remember that. It was one that one tip, wasn't it? Where it's like, Oishi asking about her license plate and then, like, lost contact or some shit. So, it kind of like, that's pretty much a foreshadowing, isn't it? Searching for his car. That meant he had gone missing. Takno san, coach, and Oishi. When I wished for it the very next day, they disappeared. No matter how angry you were when you said you wished someone was dead, it didn't normally happen. Everyone knew just wishing for it wouldn't make them dead, and that's why people could utter such curses so lightly. Well, I don't think you should really say something like that lightly anyway, really. But the curses uttered were being granted. At the time, I hadn't even been walking, and yet... Tap. I heard a footstep. And it wasn't only one this time. Tap, tap. They came from behind, and they stood right behind me. Reaching a hand for my shoulder. Would you mind tell me what's going on? Ah! Uh, Satoko? Don't scare me like that. I'm the scared one here. I was afraid if you didn't shout so suddenly. It was Satoko. Her eyes were still unstable and focused, but she seemed able to at least walk on her own now. She looked far better now compared to her earlier exhausted state. Aside from the fact that she could use some clothes. How do you feel? Are you better? My head still hurts. I can't stay outside look like this forever. She gave a smile, a show of courage, but her legs were still shaky. Anyway, what on earth is going on? From what I just heard the police talking about, Coach apparently committed suicide. Sudoku was at a loss for words. Her face grew paler and paler, and I could tell she was deafening her own ears. Can't you say that? Is that true? I didn't mishear you. That's what I heard. They said Iria since he killed himself with sleeping pills. Sudoku went down on her knees and broke out in tears. It can't be. Kochi would never, never, ever kill himself. As I watched Doka cry and then clawing at the grass, I felt myself trapped by guilt and remorse. I got so angry that Coach was treating me like a madman yesterday, which was understandable, that he betrayed me, that I'd thought he'd be better off dead. But even Coach, who to me deserved to die, still must have had people who loved and respected him. Like Sadoka here, in my selfish, egotistical anger I wished for his death and it was granted. Now Sudoku was crying hysterically as a result. The guilt tore at my heart. I worked myself up to murder of Sudoku's sake. I decided I wanted Sudoku to be happy. But was that really all it took? Murder meant taking someone's life. It meant making everyone attached to that person sad. In Sudoku's uncle's case, of course, nobody would be sad. So I didn't feel a sense of guilt at all. But Coach's death is different. I wanted to make Sudoku happy. And that had resulted in the inflicting deep sadness upon her, hadn't it? But Coach killed himself. It wasn't my... 
Sudoku still hadn't stopped crying, but she seemed to be a little calmer now. Wiping her tears, she stood up. Sorry. And the only thing I could f uh, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't know if it was you saying no. Uh, uh, it focus on the plot, and the only thing I could think of to say to her was an apology. Why are you even apologizing? I, well, yesterday I um, got into a fight with Coach. I thought that I wanted him to die. I wanted so, so he really... Soko looked at me dubiously for a few moments. Eventually her expression softened and she interpreted my words in her own way. Isn't your fault, Kate Sad? Coach was an adult too. Felt like there was something he had to give his life for and just do so after a lot of worrying and suffering. It's not anyone's fault. She smiled a little, trying to comfort me. I do, want to, I, do, I, I do not want to be naked forever. I want some clothes. You okay? Shouldn't you get someone at the clinic to... Don't die from putting on clothes before going. Still could readjust to the bath towel and start a back along the path. Her stride was wobbly and it didn't look like she'd recovered as much as she let on. At first the look tried to go back home, but it was a time in the morning when people were going to school and to work. So after seeing people walking around, she thought better of it. She must have been pretty embarrassed wearing only the towel. Yeah, you know, at first probably didn't really give you much thought, you know, with the current situation she's in. And now that she's like coming to a bit more, it's like, oh! Fuck! What the fuck am I doing out here like this? I go to Rika's house. My clothes should be there. What's wrong, Katie Stan? So I can notice I was hanging my head and spoke to me. By now he might have come off. Coach was an adult, all right. He would certainly not have killed himself after a petty fight with you, Kate Stan. You stop blaming yourself. At first I thought it was a coincidence. But with three people now, I could have couldn't discard the possibility. This freaking microphone has come out of the So it doesn't really make a difference with this microphone, really. There is no such thing as impossible in this world. These past few days haven't made any sense. What has it? The doctor seemed to be having trouble breathing, but she still tried to listen to what I had to say. At the Tonic Arch Festival the day before last, you went home on the way there, right? And so I went there and had a lot of fun. So it seem, I do apologize for getting so upset with you about it. So I can remember that she blew up at me in the classroom yesterday and bowed to me a little. If I said I actually didn't go to the festival at all, would you believe me? So I looked at me confused. She couldn't help it, of course. Of course I wouldn't believe you. What are you on about? You wouldn't, right? I don't believe it either. I mean, I didn't go to a festival, but everyone's saying I hung out with them there. Nobody would believe it, right? Are you being serious? Yeah. Ever ever since the night of Tanagashi, everything has been messed up. These weird footsteps suddenly started following me everywhere. The blood drains on Sudoku's expression. What's that following you? Yeah, I thought it was just my imagination at first, but it stayed with me. Yeah, it's probably still there. I can't tell them apart now because of your footsteps, though. Stoker took a long and hard look at me. I don't think this is the time to go on about that, you know, okay, she... Maybe she was doubting my sanity. Coach did the same thing. I mean, why wouldn't he after telling him this? The more I thought about it, the more I was unable to endure the feeling that my hatred for Coach had been meaningless. On the day with Tanagachi, I didn't go. I was doing something else. The whole time. I wasn't sleeping or unconscious or anything, so it's not possible that I walked to the festival in my sleep and forgot about it afterwards. That is quite strange. Then how were you at the festival? That's what I mean. I didn't go to the festival. No. I can't let myself get emotional. If I get agitated now, that feel like proving that there's something wrong with my head. Ah, sorry. Well, nobody will believe me, so, yeah. That's what you say, Kate Stan, they don't believe you. Then what? That night I saw a talking sound, and it 
smelled like she was looking down on me. So I made a wish. I wished that she would die. Anna Sen does have that sort of air about her, doesn't she? I cannot say that I don't understand how you feel. Did you know that Sarkin Sen died? It happened yesterday. Apparently she was burned alive somewhere. Is that true? She died? I wished for her to die and the next day she was dead. And I wish it from the police too. Do you know him? That annoying and fat detective guy. So can not a little. Heard from the police earlier but apparently went missing. And yesterday actually, I well, wished that he would die. Is all this true? I'm not lying. I don't want to believe it either, but it's true. Talking to San Coach and Oishi, I want them dead, and then they really died. For a little while, Sudoku was at a loss. A long silence ensued. <laughs> what a scary story! I should be sure not to get on your bad sidekick, Sam. Well, that's not all. There's something even stranger. It's about your... your uncle. Probably not talk about my uncle. He was there yesterday, right? At your house. Will you please stop talking about him? I don't want to! It's impossible. He couldn't have been there. I said stop talking about him! No! No! The man couldn't have been there after the night of Otanagashi. Because... because I... No! No more! Please, no more about that man! Keiichi, you're an idiot. I killed him! With my own hands! Even the Kakadas stopped crying, they were just like, oh fuck. Her face was streaked with tears and it stiffened even more as she looked at me in disbelief. On the night of Otanagash festival, I killed your uncle. So, it's impossible that he could have gone back home. But still, he went back. And last night he found fault with the dinner you made him. He yelled all sorts of things at you and then basically boiled you in the bathtub. That couldn't possibly have happened. So I wanted to make sure I'd actually killed him, so yesterday I went to dig up the corpse I buried. But the body wasn't there. Is that even possible? I killed him for sure, but there was no body. And he went home like nothing happened. Home to you and... That, that wasn't supposed to happen, was it? So his entire body stiffened. She was shrinking away like there was someone in front of her about to hurt her. Probably think you've gone all crazy, don't you? I don't blame you. I can't believe it myself. Can't you say I think you're very confused after all the people who wished were dead constantly died. It's just in shock at Coach's suicide, you're really upset. I think you should stay home from school today and rest. I'll be fine, so please take care of yourself. Stoker spoke like she understood me, but she also told me to go home. I could see the revulsion in her face and knew that she didn't want to be around me anymore. Once I show you the clinic, I'll go home. Your legs are still shaking, aren't they? It would be terrible if you collapsed halfway there. Really, I'm fine now. I don't know what to uh, 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 explore myself like into a band any more than this. She wobbled up the shrine steps, looking like she was about to fall. I immediately ran up to her and helped her stay on his feet. I mean, her feet. What? What? Stay on he feet? <laughs> You're missing an R. What was I gonna say just there? Yeah. Like, if Keiichi had just kept his goddamn mouth shut and not freaking babbled on about that shit, she wouldn't have been, you know, like... I don't want to be anywhere near you right now because you're clearly gone. You've completely lost it. But then Sudoku promptly jumped away from me. That outright rejection hurt a lot. When she got to the top of the stairs, her breathing was ragged and she wasn't even looking at me. At this point, I was being ignored. Well, it's more like she didn't want to have anything to do with me. It really was a feeling of rejection, and that hurt my heart more than any blade could have. This was the path I chose for her sake. To be treated like this at the end of it all was just so saddening. Don't be naive, Keiichi Maibara. Never wanted to be repaid in the first place. 
You didn't do it for though that Sudoku would thank you. You did it so Sudoku would be happy. The maps was what led to this ending.